I had a dream 18 years ago of riding across the country, just wanting to document people's stories, to be curious about people's lives, to engage them in conversations that really matter. And I was both super excited and also it was hitting me for the first time. I'm gonna go ride my bike for 33 days. And I'm gonna try to talk to people for 33 days and begin to have those feelings of, wow, can I do this? The next morning, I was up at 4.30, running on adrenaline. It was the first official day of our trip. Thousands of questions still plagued my mind. Would complete strangers actually talk with me, and would they truly open up? <sighs> Could I and my team ride 3,000 miles to the other side of the country? Two weeks ago, I was for sure in the best cycling shape I've ever been in my life. I was riding with a group and my chain popped off. Next thing you know, I was sliding on the pavement, doing about 25 miles an hour. There was a couple seconds as I was actually going down on the ground on my bike that I thought, wow, is this going to kill the dream? The first couple days could be tough as I've still got some um, tightness in my knee and hip from this uh, this wreck and we'll see what's going to happen. Even though we'd planned to set aside generous portions of each day for conversations, we still needed to ride hard, about a hundred miles each day, to complete the trip in the 33 days that we had off work. As I turned my bike around, in front of me were a man and a woman getting ready to head out on their own bike ride that day. He's making me ride to Mount Wilson, and he just said, I bet they're going like across the country. Yes, hi, I'm Neil. John. Hi, John. Hi, Melissa. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go out and do what I do every day on my bike, and I'm just gonna talk to people about stuff that matters to their heart. So can I ask y'all one of my questions I'm asking people, and y'all just tell me whatever, whatever you think. So. Do you guys have anybody in your life that talk that you guys talk to about spiritual things? <laughs> she is spiritual and she she seeks a lot of truth and wisdom and I have a church that I go to. Well, I haven't gone for a while. Okay. I'm a Christer, Christer, Christer. Yes, gotcha. Gotcha. No. Hey, no, no, that's, yeah, we call, we say that, we say we got, we're going to do three services this Easter for all of Christ our friends, man, and we love them. We're glad they're there. I love the stories. I love, uh -huh. like you go there, there's a message, and sometimes you just swear that it, there is psychic or the stories are yeah. uh, timeless stories that everybody has. Timeless, yeah. How about your spiritual journey? <laughs> do you mind sharing? Uh, no, I think after John said, I'm a seeker. I was looking for what's next. I'm a cultural Jew. Really? So, I have no religious background. And so, working my way through life. When you say cultural Jew, your family was Jewish? Yeah. Wow. Can I say something? Every time I meet a Jewish person, it is an honor. So, what's spiritual seeking look like for you right now? In nature, on my bike. It's love, mm. connection is the new currency. So God was yes, well, thank you. <laughs> wow, thank you guys for just talking today and blessing me this way. And you know what I pray? Just as you're on your spiritual journey, Jesus is real for you. And as you're out in nature, you would feel connected to Him. Thank you guys. Can I give y'all a hug? Safe on your ride. Okay. <laughs> It wasn't a long conversation, but we had talked about more than the weather, and I was sure if I ever saw John or Melissa again, the door would be open to another conversation. Our trip had truly begun. It's seven o'clock, it is time to go. Woo! 
today we start getting to ride bikes and talk to people and to really do it in a way that people are convinced that Jesus cares about their story. As I rode, I was looking for people to talk with, and I wasn't sure exactly how that dynamic would play out yet. We're pacing in the bike lane, but we're going to stop at the stop sign. Pacing in the bike lane. Here we are in California, having fun together. Hey, y'all, wait, I, I got a question for y'all. Why did the sesame seed not want to leave Las Vegas? Because he was on a roll. Wow, that's some good stuff. Woo! Hey, look at that house they're building. Ooh, I like that. Man, that's nice. Oh, look at the trees. This is a nice neighborhood. I come live here someday. All my senses felt heightened. I'd never ridden a bike in Los Angeles, and I noticed how every car drives fast like they mean business. Oh, yeah, Hollywood. Hollywood. Check that Hollywood sign out. mountain biking buddy of mine, Wes, was an experienced cyclist and immediately volunteered to become part of my riding team. Caroline worked in our sports and recreation ministry at our church. Her story of losing 50 pounds while preparing for a half Ironman impressed us all with her drive. John Wilder was set to ride with us for the first week only, and immediately I sensed him bringing a steady calm to the team. Hey guys! We were somewhere on Old Route 66 when I spotted two sport motorcyclists stopped by the side of the road adjusting their gear. Where are y'all from? San Diego. Okay. So were you a Marine? I was a Marine. I retired. Thank you for serving. My honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let me ask you this question, guys. First, do y'all ever think about spiritual things or have anybody in your life that you talk to about spiritual things? Yeah, um, we're doing it right now. Tell me about that. Well, you know, not not to be religious, but I just feel like when I'm on when I'm on a motorcycle, especially for multiple days, and I'm just cranking and making, you know, mm -hmm. just hour after hour all day long. Um, I feel like I've become one with the bike, one with the road, one with my environment, and uh, yeah, it's an incredibly spiritual feeling. Mm. Uh, and, 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 to, and to call it organic is kind of odd because you're kind of melding with a machine. But, yes. But it's a it's a feeling that, that I feel once, uh, once I've been on it for multiple days. So where does um, Jesus fit into the whole mix for you guys? I, you know, I really enjoy going to mass and sort of, mm -hmm. there, you know, I was in the Marine Corps for a long time, a lot of pattern, the ritual. Yeah. That. You know, I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's, you know, there's rituals bring you down and base you and ground you and connect you. And, and I really like that. I mean, I, I find as you get older, I find his, his life is so unbelievably interesting and yeah. what he did. And, you know, and I, I can, I have this vision of, of Jesus when he when he needed to make the point about the uh, the money changers flipping the tables over uh -huh. in the temple. So I mean, like like play that out in your head for a second. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. He, I mean, think about the courage, and then knowing full well all the while, you know, having you know being you know God, but at the same time knowing that in the form of man, he had to take on uh -huh. all of that horrible discomfort that he knew you know that he was going to be. You know, nearly flogged to death, and then eventually be pounded to a uh, piece of wood and hung up to die. Like uh -huh. it was something that was very important to me growing up. I still live a Christian life, but I I I don't observe mm -hmm. anymore. The church that that I went to, just you know, the back talking, the you know, um, you know, uh, gossiping. You know, we had a pastor as well that was uh, a predator on on children as well in, uh, in our Lutheran church. And, and so, so all that kind of 
question my faith a little bit, you know? You know, I will tell you, as a pastor, when I when I hear that, it's just it's painful, right? And, but I appreciate your honesty, and you know, but sometimes I think God is almost a gambler, but not really. <laughs> In the sense that he takes this huge risk and he says, I'm gonna build a church and somehow it's gonna be the living, visible expression of Jesus on the earth. And yet it's gonna be made of imperfect people who need a savior. And sometimes they really, really screw up to the max. And I, you know what? I, I wanna say as a pastor, I'm sorry that was your experience. Thank you. But at the same time, and I, I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you know we're able to be honest here because I haven't talked like this in a long time. I don't even know life about this kind of stuff because so I find it very, very personal. So something about you guys coming and talking to us right now, I feel comfortable. But um, but uh, I I don't look down on people who who do believe. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a, I don't it's, sense it's, it. a, it's important to people's lives. Um, as we're just riding our bikes today, anything you guys would like us to pray for you for, anything? Yeah. Um, I want you to pray for, for my, uh, my struggles in, in uh, Christianity. And then pray for our safety today as well. And, and uh, I'll be thinking about you guys as well. Thank you, Chris. Sean, anything for you? Um, I always like to ask God to bless about my kids and my wife. Hey. Hey, buddy. I wanted to stay in the moment, staying close with the thoughts that were still running through my mind about the conversation we'd had. That conversation was exactly what I'd hoped for. Who knew what those two men would think about on the rest of their ride this afternoon? I wondered, would they talk with each other later about those things? I was leaving that up to God. We eventually reached San Bernardino and stayed at the famous layover on Route 66 known as the Wigwam Motel where travelers sleep in teepees. It's a bit tacky and a bit historic all at the same time. We had only ridden 77 miles, a shorter ride than most days were scheduled to be, yet the day definitely seemed full. Great day, you guys. With everything done for the day, I concluded that there are plenty of people who are open to talk, as long as others are willing to listen. Got up this morning after getting actually some really good sleep, best sleep in two weeks, and feel a lot, lot better. Just looking at this blue, blue sky with the sun out, and locking in a verse in my head this morning, I thought about a conversation we had with someone yesterday. And it was interesting because he was a guy in an electric motorized wheelchair that he was getting his groceries. And I said, when you think about Jesus, what do you think about? And he said, I think about happiness. And the guy was obviously had this great spirit about him. And I said, you know, that reminds me of a verse in the Psalms where it says, oh, satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. So as we go about our day today, I'm just thinking about that verse there and saying, you know, that's what Neil Tomba needs, that's what our team needs. More than being efficient with our meals, more than outcome of how many people we talk to, more than being able to ride a certain miles per hour on our bike, that God would satisfy us in this morning with his loving kindness that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. We've gone 10 miles in um, our first 10. We've only got four wrong turns. So I'm thinking, you know, we'll work on our average. We'll shoot for only three wrong turns the next 10. Hi guys. Seriously, there's something really sweet about uh, riding together like this right now and feeling like you're part of a team and not riding alone. I really enjoy the connection 
of people riding a bike, the feeling of being connected even to this machine, the feeling of being connected to the, um, the outdoors, the feeling of just connection and enjoying being in the presence of God with these friends. The plan is to make it to Barstow by the end of the day, 88 miles away. And I'm hoping this morning to put in some distance before the day's heat hits with intensity. When you think about riding up this hill, I can show up tomorrow. I can pedal one more stroke. And I'm going to outlast this climb. And you know, when I think about times on the bike, races I've done, I'm thankful for the times that I did not quit when I wanted to quit. The grind up is not the end of the story. And over years, as I've taken people up mountains like this on a bike or a hiking, to be able to look from the top and say, wow. There is something about climbing a hill really slowly that is very helpful in getting present. Beautiful. So we met Ken, the pie guy, and we saw a sign out front. It said he had jam, said he had pie, and Neil's been saying that he will eat pie when he rides his bike. So we bought a pie and we will let him have as much as he wants. That is a fresh baked peach pie. Oh my gosh. And it was a roadside stand, so we hope you enjoy it. Oh, buddy, thank you. you do that is to share that. awesome. I, I would have gotten a single burger if I'd known that was coming. I struck up a conversation with Kelly and Victor, a young Hispanic couple with a beautiful baby, Olivia. Tell me about your tattoo. <laughs> My tattoo? Okay. So... Do you mind? Uh, no, absolutely not. So it has a few different meanings. Um, <clears throat> what, do, what do you got here? You got it's this... A, it's a, a centurion. Okay, a centurion. Uh, with with uh, the city burning in the background. Okay. So, and he's got some damage, you know, to, to his shield. He's got... The, originally, the piece is supposed to go around with us and some damage to the sword. And it really represents uh, me and how God has brought me from trials and tribulations and devastating events in my life. Wow. And really being like uh, a soldier, being an overcomer, and also the protector of my family and my children. Uh, nice. you know, now, you know, you know Kelly and, and our new baby, and it just really is. It's not done yet, but this is the beginning. So, okay. Uh, yeah, just, you know, to while we stand in. in Wow. Keep really keep the, and part of it also is having the full armor of God at all times. What is one thing that you would say, man, this is what I would want others to experience. This has been so good for me. I think it's the, the mercy of God. What does that mean? Just, you know, knowing that you've done things and that you deserve a certain something, you know. Uh -huh. I don't want to say punishment, but that's the wrong word, you know. But him just being just, uh -huh. but not giving you what you deserve. Gotcha. Because I was always so afraid of the things that I had done. But God would have been what he did. Mm. And uh, despite that, he's been so merciful to me. Wow. Um, just that mercy, I think it's so powerful, you know, because he, he already went through the worst for me, so I don't have to go through that. Wow. And I think that's just really powerful, that mercy, just to come, just to come to God as who you are. Wow. And not having to change or say, I gotta get myself right and then go mm. to Jesus. Like, you don't have to do that. And I wish more people knew that. Mm. Instead of still being out there trying to get themselves together. Ah. Then, to my surprise, they asked if they could pray for me. <laughs> okay, so do you, do you know where we're going? 
No. You know your first three turns? Okay. Let me look. Let me look. Okay. It, it's that way. I think he's purposely trying to figure out if we can get at least a couple wrong turns because we're actually behind schedule. We did 40 miles, and I'm thinking we only got about five wrong turns in. So um, he's under average for today. We've got to have at least one every 10 miles. I, I don't know if I should tell him or not. So. We good? Okay. Awesome. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here. He's, we're not going to make too many wrong turns. After lunch, things got hot fast. As we were out in the middle of nowhere, I spotted three men out working in the yard of a house. And I couldn't help myself, made a U-turn to stop and talk. So what's you guys' names? I'm Joe Tristan. Joe Tristan. Tristan. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I'm born in Arizona. Arizona. I'm part of American Indian. Yeah, are you? Yeah, Sergeant you heard of Coach Cheese? And yeah, what's your name? Sergeant Major. I'm his nephew. Sergeant Major right here yeah. and Joe Tristan. Hey, yeah, I got to go take this car. This you actually got to do some work, yes, Hanson. Sir. Sorry, yes, man. Sir. Hey, y'all be safe. Right. Thank you, man. Do you guys ever, each with each other, do you have anybody in your life that ever talks to you about spiritual things, about faith, about God, about oh, any yeah. of that? Yeah. Okay, I think I've read the Bible all my life. Really? Oh, yeah. Why do you read the Bible, Joe? What do you get out of it when you read it? What I get out of it is what's happening right now. The world's falling apart. Uh -huh. Abortion, the abortion issue. Yeah. Now, when they passed abortion in 1972, 73, they, the, the, the Supreme Court let it all out and said, okay, everybody can have it. Every state can have it. Instead of putting it up for every state to vote on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, because people think different. Some people think different. Yeah. Well, once a heartbeat hits, that's it. That's a human being. Yeah. You know, when my three kids were born, I, it wasn't a doctor. I, I had natural born. I took them out. Oh, that's scary. No, it ain't scary. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I went to mom three times. Yeah. You mind telling us one of the hardest things you, you saw when you were over in war? Hardest things? Yeah. Keeping alive. Keeping alive. I got shrap metal in my back right now. You know, on the watch, uh, they had uh, three guys with their heads off on the corner because they went to sleep. Uh, you know, I'm lucky to be 72. Yeah. You know, and I never thought I'd come out of now. I thought I, I was supposed to die over there five times. Wow. If Jesus could show up right now, what do you think he would do about all this? Oh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Judge us for what we did wrong? Hmm. You think he'd come judge us? How about judge you? Judge us for what you did wrong. Well, yeah. You're gonna, when we, when we leave this world, you're going to be judged on two things. <laughs> your sins and how much you loved. Hmm. Remember Christ tells the apostles, love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. And spiritual love. We'll help each other. Well, we don't want to keep you guys. You know, you got a long ways to ride. We got a little. God bless you. We only got about 3,000 miles left. Not so far. <laughs> Okay, Joe, hey, give me a hug, buddy. All right, buddy. Come on, man. All right, you got it. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Okay, buddy. It, it was so clear to me that here's two guys in the middle of nowhere, and they were happy. Somebody wanted to hear their story. I think the world is full of people like Joe and Sergeant Major just waiting to be listened to. I hope that we get to have lots more conversations like these. This thing is like this wheel is done. It's got a cut in it. Look at that. Uh, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to just hike it. This has no tubes in it, and these are made so that they seal if there's a little puncture. Obviously, this is not a little puncture. How about that? Here we are with flat tires in the middle of the desert having fun together. How would we have known? How would we have known? If we didn't go the extra half mile, we wouldn't have known what we were getting into, right? right? I still say, go the extra half mile. Go the extra half mile. Yes. You only go around once in life. 
We rode 88 miles today. Yesterday we did 70. That's 157. That's 43 short of our 200 mile goal for the first two days. I am feeling some tension. 100 miles a day, every day, day after day, is crazy. It really is, it's crazy. Plus so, you rode an extra 100 miles yesterday that you didn't need to. You just kept coming back and going a different direction, so. True, true. Well, for whatever we didn't do today. Uh -huh. you gotta pace yourself. So that's all I gotta say about Yeah. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. There you go. There you go. Write that down, somebody write that down. Put so it on your bike. Put it on your bike. Tattoo. Put it in your diary. We'll tattoo, tattoo that on the back of his neck. We'll, we'll tattoo that on the back of his neck. <laughs> I couldn't help but remind myself that we had more than a month of riding and conversation still to go. I hope we can all go the distance. Here we are in day three. I'm gonna hopefully ride about 100 miles today and just feeling aware of being irritated when we're taking too long from one place to another. And the, isn't that reality of being a part of a team and being in community? When you're doing life together, you go slower. But here's what I do believe. You go slower, but you go farther. Our destination was Needles, California, near the Arizona border. We would be riding through the Mojave Desert. Long, flat stretches of hot road lay ahead. It was 10.30 in the morning and we were in the middle of nowhere. I had had no conversations with anyone that day, so I prayed and there in the middle of the desert walking, getting his exercise, was James. Oh yeah, I like the open road. I, I don't do very well in the uh, office. You, you know, James, you know it's funny, James, I'm a pastor. Are you? And I, I will tell you, I don't do very well in the office. And that's why I ride a bike all the time. And James, you have family back in Arlington? Oh yeah, I have a wife, four sons, 20 grandkids. 20 grandkids, dude, I got two. Do you have people in your life where you guys talk about things of the heart, like spiritual things or faith or stuff like that? Oh, I'm Catholic. Yeah? My wife's Catholic. She doesn't go to a mass anymore, but uh -huh. she goes to a, a non-denominational church. I get up, I go through my, my morning prayers, take off wow. at the end of the day. I do my rosary, I read a little bit. Wow, okay. You know, then I go to sleep. Wow. But I, I do it, I don't actually think about think about it as a something to do. It's just a regular routine. It's become you know? part of your life. Yeah. Wow, James, that's that's pretty um that's a habit that seems that matters to you then. Oh yeah. yeah. For, where does Jesus fit in the mix for you? He's supposed to be number one. It's like you're, it's it's your goal, you know. Your, uh, your uh, the the goal post at the end. I tend to zigzag every now and then, <laughs> but I try to keep my eyes on the Lord. You, you know, James, it's so interesting. You we use the word goal because the Apostle Paul in the Book of Philippians he actually talks about striving for the goal of the upward prize of the call of God in Christ Jesus. Isn't that cool? Oh, yeah. If you could get Jesus to do one thing to help the world, what would you do? And just maybe people be a little more tolerant. Mm, of each other. Yeah. yeah, I think if they want to make the world a little bit better, it starts at home. Love your wife, love your kids, <sighs> respect your neighbor. Wow. James, great to talk to you. I know you're going to turn around here. Awesome. Hey, James, let me give you a hug before we go, man. Hey, buddy. It's so interesting how so many people we talk to express some kind of belief in Jesus that maybe they're not talking about out loud, but somehow it matters to James, you know? People are Jesus with skin on. The way God designed it was that we experience the love of Jesus through real people.
At first, riding through the desert was fun. Speeding toward road signs, trying to ride a little faster than Wes, making sure I stayed in front. I didn't realize that I was setting myself up to be destroyed by the desert. At mile 95, my body said enough. I was parched and my feet were cramping and my head was pounding. The last five miles of that desert felt like an eternity. And on top of all that, my ego was bruised that I'd been the one to bonk. It has been a long, hot day going through the Mojave Desert. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> That feels good. I needed that dip in the Colorado River. It helped wash off some of the day and remind me that I was actually encouraged by the many conversations we had over the last three days. People really wanted to talk when they sensed we really wanted to listen. 